all the meetings to order. We've already done the pledge for the hearing, so we won't duplicate that. Uh, Diane is not with us this evening, and so um, issue come up that she could not be with us. So, uh, let's start with uh, approval of the minutes of the September 18th meeting. It's been distributed. Anybody make the motion? I make a motion to approve this. Mike Malone. Okay. Mike Churro seconds. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carry. We also need to approve the minutes of the September 20th special meeting. I make a motion to approve the Malone September 20th. And Chura seconds. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carried. Treasurer's report, Bill Dwyer. Okay, new codes, one sheet. <laughs> Top of the page, assets, 88,000. 66. Bottom of the front page are that there's three codes vouchers. And on the other side is the checking account and the savings account. Say there's three codes vouchers tonight. And the district one, that's a little thicker. Like 16 pages. And they are both sides, I hope. <laughs> okay, front page. We can top of the page, the assets, bottom, liabilities. Page two and three are the previous year comparison. Four and five is the uh, budget versus the actual. service administration fees of 143%. That's because we didn't know how much uh, we've overspent that category, but in the new budget, we've added, we've increased that. And the same happened with the, the district's uniform stipend. That's 153%. Six, seven, eight, or nine are the bank account pages. And that will be, dollar amount there will change at the next month's report because some of the money has been moved to that New York class. And that won't show up in QuickBooks, so I'll have to do like a spreadsheet. So we'll have to add the QuickBooks figure to the New York class to get these numbers. Okay, that's the one. Page 10 is the uh, referendum. And that's updated as of today. We have 7,200 left in referendum five at the top. We've got 8,200 left in the referendum one. Both of those decreased by the uh, lighting for the chief's vehicle. And let's see what else to do. Oh. 
page 11, liabilities. Again, nothing's due until December 15th. They have a 40,000 principal and a 3,000 interest payment. Page 12, the service award took another hit last month. We lost $29,000. And 13, 14, 15, and 16 are tonight's vouchers. <clears throat> a total of 87,956. <clears throat> we have four credit card vouchers, two reserve vouchers, and one jury duty voucher. to approve the treasurer's report as yes, submitted. Chura makes the motion, Malone seconds the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. A motion to approve the vouchers as presented and audited. I'll make that motion. Motion by Charlie, second by Malone. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carried. Um, Mike Chura has the, uh, the honors for the bank statements this month. Uh, correspondence, Amy. We got a, a notice from the ISO, which is Insurance Services Organization Office. Um, we're going to have an ISO inspection on Monday, October 23rd at 10 a.m. Um, we have a bunch of reports and stuff that we have to get ready for them. They'll meet with code enforcement and um, yeah. Yeah. So is it a full-blown? Um, We also have something on the Central Region Fire Districts. I did that last month, but um, the October 28th is the Central Region Seminar here that's open to um, fire commissioners, fire district officers, and chiefs. Um, they're going to be talking, there's a couple different programs, uh, budget and election review. Um, somebody from Rochester, Monroe County area is going to talk consolidation and paid staffing. And uh, we'll have some open questions with uh, attorney for the state association, Joe Frank. Um, <clears throat> I think that all of our commissioners will find me on attending. One, two, three, four, I think Diane. Mm -hmm. uh, Jeff, are you yep. there? Okay, so we'll probably have six. <clears throat> the chief is free. Uh, commissioners are. $20 a piece, I believe. Okay, uh, Chase report. Uh, new radio batteries have been ordered. We're scheduled to receive them by the end of September. Uh, they're on back order for the manufacturer. We do not have a new date for those. The uh, apparatus, the second juice vehicle, has arrived. Both of them have had the uh, radio equipment installed along with lights and lettering. They are now both in service. Nothing for special events this month, nothing new on the stations. And again, as uh, Amy was saying, ISO will be here the, um, I suppose I said the week of uh, October 23rd, but it's actually just going to be a one day. We'll be in and out of here. They'll probably spend most of the day with us. 
Uh, Chiefs are going to continue taking one duty night a week for the rest of the calendar year. And again, just a reminder that the um, daily drills are ongoing and all active members are welcome to come and participate. Any questions from the Chief? Um, now, uh, Chief Corcoran and Speech are not here. Do we have any reports yeah, on them? It's, no, I had meetings, so they're, uh, everything's included. Okay. In Ready reports, building and facilities. That would be Diane and Mike. Um, Diane's not here. Mike, do you have anything? Uh, she didn't pass anything down to me, but I know mm -hmm. The executive board is uh, looking at moving over to headquarters. That's it. Do we have any discussion on that in the board? discussion for anyone or all the talking about moving the fire department board over to district headquarters. Um, anybody have any other suggestions other than moving to the office over in headquarters? Don't be bashful. You don't get this often all the time. Is there a time frame? I don't know. I haven't heard anything about a time frame. Is there a time frame? I'm not on the committee for it. I'm not sure. Has the executive board discussed moving to headquarters? That was, yeah, the executive board was told to prepare and move to district headquarters and take over an office there. Um, so I was preparing to do that. I started moving stuff in the office. Uh, moving stuff out of the office, kind of cleaning up stuff, and I was told to stop and wait for some more discussion on it before it actually happens. Yeah. So, I didn't schedule the meeting. I don't know what she has planned, so I attended it like you did. Okay, we'll see what happens with that then. I did, I will tell you that I, the fire districts, stuff that was in the office, like the children's hats and the pencils and all that kind of stuff, we sent back to district headquarters, so it's there. Sure. And so, like I said, we started cleaning that stuff out. Um, the Class A uniforms, that would be the next thing to be moved somewhere so that we can keep them safe and clean and available. Um, that's a whole closet full of stuff. Yeah. But, I mean, there's a whole lot of shelving um, at headquarters. Plus, there's a couple of nice coat racks that if you want to keep them Hanging. Correct. And, and, and I think that we could cover, them. it might be a good idea to cover them, but, um, you know, because here they're in a closet, right? Correct. And there they wouldn't be in a closet, but they could be, we could certainly cover them. Correct. And I said, I just need coordination of manpower to get them down there and make it happen. So, we the right word now is manpower, but. We need resources to move them down to the, <laughs> need resources to move them down there and keep them safe. They're valuable both to the department and the district. Sure. So. Well, we can work together on that <clears throat> project. Yeah. And like I said, I don't know where the rest of it's going. I'm still preparing to vacate the office like I was told. Okay. Um, New truck committee would be Diane and Chura. Um, 
We've got on the agenda here a permissive referendum for the sale of vehicles. Do you have it figured out yet what vehicles you're going to? Uh, Not 100 percent. I'm waiting for more information from Luke on which explorer that was replaced. From who? From Luke. Oh, okay. So not at this time. Okay, so that. On uh, the apparatus, the chief's vehicles are now in service with being all black. Back in January 2020, the commissioners approved, there was a motion made by Commissioner Marizio, seconded by Diane Rafkus to change the colors from lime green to Red over black, or black over red, I'm sorry. We have the two chief's vehicles out there that are all black. We need to get them wrapped. There's not a motion that needs to be made. There has been no motion to make the color change, so that would make the apparatus with three different colors. Currently, I've had people, members, come up and say they look like police cars. They do look like police cars. I was at headquarters today waiting to pull out make a left-hand turn and there had been a deputy at station two earlier that I saw. I thought it was that deputy. I saw that he had turned his right signal on. I thought he was pulling in. It ended up being assistant chief Corfrey. So I think that for the safety of our chiefs that drive the vehicles, it needs to be identified as a piece of fire apparatus, not a potential police vehicle. So I think we need to make that happen. Okay, and you don't need a motion or anything because that was a decision that was made. Um, so if Diane is not here, Mike, can you take that message back to the... That, I mean, Charlie brought it to me about 10 minutes ago. That was before I was a commissioner and during the specking of all the vehicles with both of the chiefs that are currently driving them, it wasn't pushed or mentioned to doing the wrapping. So until Diane can come back after meeting with car two, car three, I'm not gonna make one decision for everybody. It's the decision of the commissioners to go with a color change. That has not happened. It needs to be wrapped with the red or painted. It's that simple. It's not the choice of the chiefs. I'm sorry. We are responsible for the apparatus, correct? We're responsible for everybody that operates the apparatus, their safety also. Thank you. So, Lysander Public Safety. Next meeting is October 24. The first, we thought it was the 17th, which is tomorrow night, which is a popular night for budget hearings. Uh, and uh, I think GBAC had a, a uh, conflict also. So that was changed to October 24th at Plainville. The fire prevention schedule, um, Wednesday at Van Buren, uh, the following Tuesday at Reynolds, the following Monday at Palm. Um, Charlie, did you see anybody signed up out here? Yeah, we have people signed up for Palmer on the 30th. So there's people signed up for that. Okay, so we don't have anybody but signed up for, for the other two Wednesday. No. I think Baldensville's got two. Uh, hopefully we can pick up a couple of people for Wednesday. Budget and finance. Um, Amy 
went online and, and did her magic with the um, two percent tax cap, and we are within, you know, twenty thousand dollars or or such. Um, so we decided that it would be prudent to um, pass the resolution to exceed the tax tax cap in case there was some. Um, uh, financial um, issues that we did not see. And, and as I said during the public hearing, the retirement figures for the police and fire have not been populated on that form yet. Uh, so uh, I would entertain a motion to exceed the tax cap uh, for the 2024 budget. It's a motion to exceed by resolution. I can read the entire resolution if you want, or we can just, I can do the whereas and the what fors okay, when so, I put it in the minutes, but it has to be by resolution. Okay, so if I make a motion to approve the resolution to override the tax cap. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Okay, so I'll unless, make that motion. Unless you want me to read it. Is there a second? Sure, I'll second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed? Well, that's good because I think it has to be up to 60%. Uh, and Diana's not here, so we should be okay there. Um, so now that we have made that motion, we need to make a motion to approve the budget as presented. Uh, and Amy can fill in those figures um, as they were presented at the budget hearing. And the final, final figure, the okay. tax levy is um, $1,948,518. We have a motion to approve that budget. Malone, LaPreece. Okay. Um, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed? Carried. Okay. IT committee. That would be Diane and Mike Chura. You know, Amy has sent out something about a meeting. We're working on scheduling a meeting to talk about some projects that we need to get working on. Talk about what? Some projects. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, personnel committee. Um, Caitlin Crandall has been hired as part-time firefighter EMT. Um, uh, I think that has she started. Uh, yes, she had a she started last week. Yeah. <coughs> um, truck maintenance. Nothing. Jura and Rafkus, nothing. Home testing tomorrow. I'm not sure if you know about that. I'm going to try to get them all done in one day. Building maintenance. Malone and Lucrece. Um, I received three quotes for the, the garage roof at Station 1. And I make a motion to spend approximately $4,500 to replace the roof at Station 1. Garage. I need to go up to five. You need to go up to five? Just to be on the street. Okay. Because I think the one quote straight up. Okay. It was the one I was looking at is about forty four, so yeah. so cool. approve up to up to five 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 thousand dollars to replace the garage roof at station one. I'll second it. Okay, discussion? All in favor? Aye. 
Opposed? Very. So that it broke. All right. Um, no. I also. Um, You're still working on some man doors? Uh, man doors, I got three quotes for man doors. And the one quote I got is addressing all five doors to make them tight and replacing of doors as needed. Um, the one quote I got that was decent was around 7,000. Um, give or take, I'd like to up it to maybe 8,000 for um, replacement of sun doors and weather stripping and sweeps. So you've got two verbals? I've got three quotes. You've got three quotes. Three quotes written. Yes. One was around seven, and I got two that only did three of the doors, but they were around sixteen to seventeen thousand. There was about five thousand dollars per door, and I'm just worried about the structure of the the concrete blocks because they want to replace the whole frame. But I think the I, I talked with Charlie, and Charlie and I both looked at the the framework. And the, the frame of the, the doors is fairly intact. And there were one of the doors, when they installed it, didn't have the, the lentil put on top, so that would require more uh, concrete and um, steel frame. And it's held up for how many years at this point? I'm just afraid if we get in there and they start replacing the frame, that it might be structurally, have some structural problems. So uh, I, I suggest that we just go with uh, putting in new doors and new hinges, um, weather stripping, uh, some sweeps, and some thresholds, and tightening it up. And uh, the one quote that I got is, we'll do all that. For, for how much? So it, it came in about 69.54. So I figured if we, which is 7,000. So I figured if we up it to 8,000, that would help. That would hopefully take care of any other problems we have that would tighten up the building. Um, I think it would be nice, you know, like you brought the quotes on the roof, if you brought, you know, sent or brought us the quotes, and the other quotes too. Yeah. Uh, you, so you're happy with, with 8,000, and, and you said that's for how many doors? That's for the five doors that they quoted. Five doors. <coughs> okay. So are you making that motion? I'll let the station, I'll let the station yeah. There was a motion. I'll second it. And, and you said it's all here? All here. All station one. Building. This building. Just because of the age. Okay, a motion made and seconded. Um, 8,000. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. And both of these uh, will come out of your, your budget line item. Yes. Um, I did get three quotes for Station 2 roof, which will have to be set up to bid if we want to do it. I did get a just recently a 18 page roof assessment that was very detailed but and it was uh, the quote was around 70 70 some thousand I did get one for 71 77 and I got a third quote for 132,000 for the roof but that would have to be put out for public bid yeah. I also was looking at uh, Station 2 floor because Mike uh, had asked to look at Station 2 floor. I did get one quote for the floor at Station 2. It was 53000 to do this floor. And I asked Luke to, there was another one, and that was the, uh, the one-day floor that uh, Barb had asked to look at, the floor in a day. <laughs> And when I got the quote, it was like 53, almost 54,000 to do the, this floor. There was another one that uh, 
Um, this fire department uh, owns and operates. The, it's a it's a contractual, but they need measurements, and Luke is actually going to do measurements. I think it's a little bit late in the season to do anything on the way of floors, just because of the temperature and how long it would take to cure. A lot of times it takes two or three days for the floor to cure, depending on whether they're doing the tile or the mastic to put tiles down. So it might be something that uh, we might have to look at in the spring when the weather's better. And the same thing, I don't know how long it would take to uh, bid out the, uh, the roof at Station 2, but I would have to uh, get this through the commissioners and we put it out to, to bid to redo the roof, but they did a very comprehensive, I just got this the other day for the station two roof. So, but that's all I have right now. Okay. Any, uh, any questions for Mike and Charlie? Steering committee, uh, we had a meeting on uh, October 7th, talked about um, uh, discussion relative to the possible new location of the executive office uh, for a bunk to make room for a bunk room at station one. Um, some, uh, Options were discussed. It appeared uh, that uh, the, the none appeared to be very satisfactory of the discussions that you know, and the ideas. I mean, one was have roll out beds <clears throat> and store them in the tables and chairs room and bring them out. And not only is the tables and chairs room almost always full. But there wouldn't be any privacy whatsoever um, if we just rolled out some roll out beds. And uh, it, we, we really, you know, there, there wasn't any um, viable options discussed. Um, Christmas parties, uh, Deb Newman is planning uh, the children's party. Um, Great Pat Speech and Lynn Tanner are, are heading up the event with her. Uh, they will be um, definitely having gifts for under under 10. Now the Santa Run is scheduled for the same day, so Tom Echo was going to work on perhaps uh, trying to change the Santa Run. Tentative, I think it's going to be the following Saturday, the 9th, I believe it is. Okay. Okay. Well, what date is it? Get the names of Betty Dinger again. You say no good job. And, and Deb said that she's disappointed that we don't seem to be getting members to step up to help at these events. Uh, additional help is definitely needed for the golf tournament. Um, the issue of gift cards was brought up. And um, there appears to, to be some confusion about gift cards, and we're looking for a better explanation from John Melchior at the next business meeting. So, um, and regarding the last business meeting, concerns were brought forward regarding uh, the discussion at the last business meeting regarding a named individual. It was felt that this discussion was inappropriate and should be better handled in private discussions. And business meetings should be positive messages and not be a venue for personal issues or negative discussions. Uh, the next um, steering committee meeting would be November 4th, I think. And going back to our rotating schedule, um, Mike Chura and myself would be the commissioners for the next meeting, and I'll get that uh, invitation out soon. Fire prevention. So as you had stated, the schools uh, have 
fire prevention going on. There's also fire prevention going on at the Y on October 28th. Amy's been putting things up on the board and on the Facebook. Thank you. Old business, we've got policy review. I think that's in uh, the SOG 03017. Are still working on yep. that? New business. Uh, we got no new business here. I've got officer qualifications. Officer qualifications. Thank you, sir. Assistant Chiefs, all of the above, and what it says is National Fire Incident Reporting System, NIFRS 5. I think that needs to be removed from the policy. This is something that's going away next year, I believe. This is something that our chief doesn't have. So I don't think that it's a requirement that we should put upon our members. So why is it going away? What's happening? You know, I mean, there will be no, there will, will no longer be a... There's a new reporting system coming out to take place. Okay. So I'd like to make a motion to remove that from the policy. Do I have a second? Vice Chair? Any discussion? This is your job, but any discussion on it? <laughs> <laughs> so again. Today is the, what, what's the date today? The 16th, 16th. 16th, 23rd, we're going to revise that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. So moved. Thank you. Back in new business, um, we need to approve the fire district election board for the annual fire district election in December. Uh, did you? Did we appoint anybody at the organizational meeting? Okay. So, do you have any names? Yes. Um, we need to appoint Lynn Tanner, Linda Williamson, Terry Massaro, Dorothy Dwyer, and Dave Speech as an alternate. Stipend is seventy dollars to serve on the election board for the annual fire district election. So it's Tanner, Williamson, Massaro, and Dwyer. Mm -hmm. And how much? Seventy dollars. Okay, I'll make that motion. One second. Chair, I'll second the motion. <coughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> Carry. Um, do we have any further business? Public comments. 
Did you talk about the election day? What's that? The election day. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. It, it wasn't on here. Yes, so. it is. She has a yeah. older version. Okay. Right. She made her uh, own. Yeah, so I sent out an email to the other commissioners um, a couple of days ago about the public elections here in November and how we would uh, handle the uh, covering of the stations for the election. Uh, does anybody have uh, thoughts and ideas about how to resolve that? I, had, I gave us tons of ideas. And in the past, we had two caretakers, and each caretaker took a station, and they did overtime. So they did like eight or nine hours of overtime that day. It was fairly costly. Um, and do we really need to have a person physically in the building at all times? That's probably the first thing we have to decide. Uh, are we happy to have someone on call? We'll have the page staff here potentially if there's not a call. So there will be people present other than members. These, these four are already members of the department. So they can oversee the hall. Well, no, that's, that's a not, separate election. That's a second election. You're talking about the, the that was election. election. OK. You just <laughs> back that right up. <laughs> Sometimes we paid uh, a member uh, $50 to, to be here, you know, um, from you know, noon until 10 or something like that, or from 2 until 10. At Station 1, we will have some uh, staff here unless they go on a call. But um, I, I guess. We're probably still in that mindset that we have to have someone here physically. And do we want to continue that, or do we want to say it's OK to have someone on call? Again, we've got people that are on call. We've got Luke that is potentially on call. Um, don't know. So the people that are here, who's here manning the station or occupying the station, stations during the election? Um, normally or, or? This coming year. It's an election, so it's a public election board. No, who, yeah, who's the, okay, so. Yeah, but we don't have anything to do with it. Okay. It's an election, it's. Board of Elections. Board of Elections, there, thank you. So I know that in the past, Mike and Linda have been here, there have been other people that are members that have been here. Um, yeah, Mike and Linda are often uh, scheduled for Station 1. Mm -hmm. That's cool, but um, I don't know that the people at Station Two um, are familiar with the, you know, the, the stations at all. But in, in that case, I mean, Luke might be able to be in that area during the day. Our paid uh, firefighters would be here except for when they're on call. Um, I'd be glad to help out, but I'm going to be out of town that week. So I just, yeah. um. Is it possible to just close off? 
What's that? Sorry, is it possible to just close the partition and that's all they're allowed to use? The partition is usually closed, so yeah. the, right. they're over here, but the people that are working it do go in the back. They, they're they here all day, so oh, they, yeah. they have access to the, the refrigerator and the cooler and, and that, so. And having somebody here, just if something happens, if they run out of toilet paper, or you think it's plugged or whatever, it just gives them a resource to have somebody here. But we could have somebody here at five and somebody here at 10 and just give them minor sure. works information. They can contact us if they have problems. Well, we can have people come in and out and check on them. I don't know. In the past, it was they want, the board wanted somebody here the whole time. But as boards change, the thought process changes. So. I, I guess what I'm getting at is that are we, are we satisfied to have an individual or individuals on call rather than sitting here um, the whole time? And if we're happy with that, then I think we can work it out. But if we're not, then we're going to have to hire some I think we're fine. I mean, I don't know how you guys feel on it. Uh, I think they're actually responsible. If, we, if there's a number for them to call, Luke or whomever, that, you know... Would respond. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I'm fine with that. Yeah. Somebody on call. Okay. Well, then I guess we'll, we'll work it out. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, last time I think Matt's speech came in in the morning at 5 because I mean, it not work or something. I mean, we, we were able to, to make it work, but um, we just want to make sure that we understand that we won't have a person, a body in the, in the building mm -hmm. all, all the time. But it was the chief on duty, on night duty that night, yep. the overnight, could be the person who yep. at least well, opens up one of the stations, yep. and then the other station is handled by Luke. <laughs> Yeah. Whoever that, not, uh, you know, because they're always the same yeah. rotation. Yeah. The email I sent to all the commissioners had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, mm -hmm. nine, ten bullets of options. Mm -hmm. You know, we can do one. this one. But I think that the, the underlying thought was are we happy to have someone on call? Okay. That's resolved. But, um, anything else? Okay. But now we can do public comments. Mm -hmm. okay. John? John? Two quick questions on the budget. Brian Felice, his number is not in here, or is it in here somewhere or wrapped around somewhere else? About the EMS, is that correct? It used to like that private police $1,500. I don't yeah, see the EMS. The training was the contract was due up this month. I just didn't see them. I didn't know where. It usually had like its own special thing here. I didn't see it. The other one I was going to ask too is I know the Commissioner Chair mentioned before about um, the uh, bricks cost a lot of money. Where is that one in here on the account? I'm just curious where, where are you counting the bricks cost? Of? It's in the software or programs or something. Brick, we don't pay for bricks, we just pay for the station boards. Okay. And I think it's like $2,000 a year for them to be able to put it on the station boards. Okay, I just, just, think it's just trying to hear what the cost is again, accounting, sorry to me. I think it's under IT, under like software or something. Okay. I know at Sawyer County went to, I am responding, and yeah. the county Well, that, you know, and, and others, 
other major aid companies to use I am responding. And, and that would have helped us in our communication with the 91 website. But um, I don't know if any other department is using bricks. I mean, maybe I'm limited, but I don't know the other department. I am responding, yes, quite a bit. I know one of the reasons I, I thought that we went with bricks was because of that hydrant and mapping. I'm responding to all that also. And all the pre plans we added to it, amongst many other things. Okay, is that it? Um, I know we you want to get oops. Yes. A bunch of members asking to look into something on uh, the responses that have been given. So July if you take a look at, um, and I'm going back to a August minutes from here, um, it's reported that we get 10 people per call. July, if you look at it the best, you get 6.53. August, August was the month we had that storm. If you take just prior to the storm, it's 6.65%. During the storm, you had 20.13%. After the storm, it went back to 7.63%. Is it, are you and talking that included two people? Or people, people, oh, okay. people. Sorry. Okay. People. Now, if you include the storm for the whole month, you average 10.79 people. That's your highest percentage because of that store. Mm -hmm. It's 10.79. 10 because we had, you know, 20 some calls that night or something? 25. Yeah, close to that. And I know there was a lot of Happiness when there was 109 people that responded. If you totaled it, well, it's that per call. Each call, one person. You go to a call, that's one. You go to the next call, that's two. That's where they got the 109. But if every member went, instead of 109, you should have 5,100 or 5,014. So not as many people responded as you thought. Oh, no. That, no, that, no, it was just the way it was reported. Yeah, so people asked for Looking at the number, listening to it, I was like, that's physically impossible. We don't have that many that's members. Agreed. And that's, that's why they asked me to look into it. Um, so at the highest for the months that were reported, uh, it was 10.79 people and that included all the storm coverage and as soon as midnight hit people disappeared um, it, went yeah, after, it went after midnight huh? yeah it went after midnight because well, i was out there till two it was there were only a couple charlie that stayed after midnight we were up till three o'clock that morning two thirty yeah. three o'clock in the morning yeah. when they came home this is just from our fire reports <laughs> they're from the fire reports no, there were some people that went home. That didn't oh, yeah. There were still a lot of people here after midnight, but there were some people that went home. So I think what that shows is that when there's a situation, we won't call it an emergency, a situation, we have people that respond. So that's a positive thing right there. Could there have been more according to Mike's numbers? Yes. but. I think with what happened that night, um, we had a good response. We did what we can do. It was just uh, one of those freakish, freakish storms that, you know, one in a hundred years. It certainly was very localized. Yes, definitely. Mm -hmm. Yes, and the Lysander Public Safety Committee should have taken responsibility for the, the public information on that whole storm to inform people of where there were issues. As a total, they, they along with the town of Lysander, should have taken that responsibility for a, for a localized disaster. 
and that, that public information should have been coordinated through that organization and or with the town of Lysander. Instead of being very localized, there could have been a lot better social media announcements to clarify for the public and the, and the press where, what roads were closed, where were the issues. We may not have had some of the issues that we had had there not been better public information. And Bob Wicks is working on yes. that uh, <laughs> disaster plan. Um, I think within the next uh, within the next month he's going to have his first meeting um, with representatives from each fire department and fire district. Well, having just taken a class with the National Disaster Preparedness Training Center, um, I can see where the um, needs are and where there were some mistakes made in that whole arena. Um, and I just completed that class last week with that. And two other things that, looking at those reports, uh, positive things, uh, our numbers did increase during the day, and the majority of the people are sitting in this room, are riding with the paid people. Does and that surprise you? It does a lot of people. The other thing that's big is they're getting out the door quicker. Question for you. So what does the commissioners want me to take back to my people of my house? Are the numbers of the six point whatever percent are people in the seven? Is that adequate? Still falling below your expectations, meeting expectations? What do you want me to tell my people that, work, that I work with? The call, the call, the six people want to call, is that Where's that right at? Good, bad, okay? It's good for them because that's what they're turning out with, right? It's positive for the department. I just don't know where the I don't know where the, the goal is so I can say hey, great job or we gotta do better or what can I do to get you better? I mean, obviously you said after midnight night would be nice that I have more people, obviously, but overall, what do I tell them? Give them a hundred percent, John. You know that's not gonna happen. More is better. I would go back and say that we did a good job. You did a good job by responding, by coming and taking care of the needs, what we signed up for, by helping out. Could we have done better? Yes. Could others have come and helped? Yes. But who knows what was going on in their lives? So you give them praise when you can, and you encourage them to continue. And I think that's what we need to do. Again, somebody just asked me to check the numbers and bring it. That's all I did. Those numbers need to be presented on an ongoing basis at this meeting and published so that they, they are fully aware of at every meeting of those numbers, because that's those are some of your numbers leading up to your case for yeah. either going with 24-5 or 24-7 with two paid people. So you need to have those numbers out in the public so that everyone's aware. So the membership is aware. They have the, they have the obligation on their part to go get the minutes on their own, but th that information needs to be made public. That's part of your public information that needs to be out there to the public, why you're taxing them. I mean, you go to others, other departments and those numbers are out on their message boards. Go to Oswego, the town of Oswego, we were at 300 calls. They were already at 500 earlier this year. And, and don't give, I won't tell you what the date was because it's been a while, but they had that information right there. No, they don't have any paid staff. But the town of Oswego, it's not a big fire department, all right? But that information's out there. That's part of public education and public information that needs to be done by the district so that they, the taxpayers understand why their bills are what their bills are. Public information is very important. I think what's, what's happened is the chief, one of the chief's goals was to decrease the response time 
Yeah, and I think we've, we, he's met that, we've met that. So that's a positive thing for everybody that we're helping out, all of our taxpayers. So that's a good thing. And we're doing more 91s. So, good job, Chief. Good job, guys. And there were two 91s in one of those months, and supposedly those numbers are supposed to be taken out when you do the statistics. Um, they're not if there are calls. Yeah, those. I well, left them I in there because they made your numbers better. And they were all our calls. Yeah, last time they were all ours. Yeah. So, <laughs> so with the numbers that you have, are those, you said that some of them were after midnight, but are the majority of those? Uh, the one after midnight, I was talking just that storm. Just that storm. Okay. Yeah. So the... Because you had anywhere from early on, I don't know if it started 4 o'clock, 6 o'clock, something like that. People would start picking up and you'd have 20 and then it'd go up to like 24, 26 people maybe. And then it hit it around midnight and then it went to six, down to like three, um, to like six in the morning. Okay. And then a couple of people came back at like four. Yeah. So. <laughs> so minus that storm night, are the numbers that you're talking about from 1,800 to 1,800? I, and they include the pay cuts in those numbers, or they do not? Phrase that again, please. Okay. The, you're talking about the hours there for the number of calls. Because if you have one call, one person, one call, three yes. person, okay. So are the, do those numbers include the paid personnel as well? Mine did not include the paid. Okay, that was my So question. the other ones may. I didn't do the other numbers. Okay, does that also include the paid caretaker? Because he's paid staff. When I calculated the numbers, when the paid caretaker is working, he's paid staff. And if the chief goes on a call? He's paid. So that's not included, none of those, people, none of those four are included in, in the numbers? Which numbers? <laughs> <laughs> Okay. It's because I have numbers for people that responded, volunteers that responded, paid that responded, EMTs that responded, EMT interiors that responded, exteriors only that responded. Okay? <laughs> that all that is glommed into one because now you have 57 people responding on one call. Different. Because not like, all, of, that, a, not all of them went on every call. How many interior EMTs do you have that aren't paid? Oh, three. Yeah. Me, John, Jeremy. Diane, Jeremy. Chiefs. Two Matt. chiefs. Matt, Joel. I was going to say all the EMTs are firefighters except for three. So of 17, there's 14 of them. No, what? No, is it there are interior. Interior. Myself, Jer myself and Jeremy interior. and then the yeah. two chiefs. So there's only like three and or four. Justin Bullock. But he's not doing, no. he's not. I'm just so sure. there's not that many. He's when the columns were made in the beginning. Six days a week. There was, you thought the break would be just as equal as interior, interior, EMTs, and exteriors. It's not, there's not as many. There's very few interior and EMTs combined. Yes. Okay. There's only less than a handful. Okay. So you can probably just go. In so that number the, gets even smaller then. Instead of 10, now we're down to. It, it's the same amount of people, it's just which column did you put them in? That it, Mike? Mm hmm. Okay, thank you. Um, so, um, I make the motion that we move to executive session for G. Um, so, if, uh, anybody second that motion? Second. Well, second. Second. The resume and employment history of an individual which may lead to his or her continued employment with the district. Yeah. Okay. Um, all in favor? All right. Aye. 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 Aye.